morning, good morning, good morning. It's time to rise and shine. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you're feeling fine. Good morning, get up, get out of bed. It's time to wake up, you sleepy head. Time to wake up, it's a brand new day. And we can't miss out on that day to decay. Get your day planned out to be at your best. And you gotta make sure you got the right back test. Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake. Cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes. And race your car. Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday, October 19th. Got the uh, S&P is up four points, NASDAQ up 58, Russell down four, Dow down 16. So a little mixed bag of tricks. At the freeze, VIX was down about 0.73%. Markets dropped a little bit, so it may end up at the open, the VIX may end up uh, up a little bit or more flat. My um, my Thursday AM. Let's see. Requires VIX overnight max point two five. Yeah, so it may uh. May qualify. We'll see what happens at the open here. May go Rick or may go AM Iron Condor. One or the other. Two minutes till the bell. We've got uh, notes and bonds are a little bit lower. Gold and silver lower. Oil and natty gas lower. Grains flat to lower, euro and the pound a little mixed, Bitcoin up about 1%. Krish is in a talking mood today. Uh oh, look out. Those are the only thing I, I, I'll do uh, DKS at 925 central, but those are the only other, I mean, they're going to do the Rick or the AM iron condor. So probably be a short little stream this morning. So if you're new, got any questions, once we get in, feel free to post, talk about anything zero DTE related. I've also got a one, two B and B double calendar from yesterday that I'll take off this morning. I got stopped on my DKS yesterday. All right, opening bell coming. Let's see where we shake out here. VIX futures are still down one and a half percent. So I'm assuming VIX is still gonna be contracting, which means it'll be time for a Rick. VIX won't print probably for another minute or two. And frankly, with, you know, Jerome speaking today, I'd, I'd probably just do a Rick here if it sets up as opposed to the AM Iron Condor. Oops. 
No, Rick's trading at 15 bucks. That's too expensive. Just doesn't give you enough upside profit to make it worthwhile, in my opinion. I mean, it's barely 25%. So we may be doing nothing this morning. Or me, I should say I may be doing nothing this morning. Yeah, VIX is contracted. So the Rick. So I would I would still consider doing a Rick if it if it looks a little bit better. I mean I could do a uh Do a fifteen. Let's see what the fifteens and the eighties look like. Yeah, it's just not setting up good. I don't. I don't like that little profit to the upside. You'll see that with Rick sometimes when you have something like, you know, Powell speaking. Just won't give you the right risk reward that you want. So my Thursday quiet lunch that I trade requires a overnight VIX move up of at least 2%. So that won't qualify for me either. Wuga, what's your uh, what's your quiet lunch? Do you have a, a link handy? So Annette, on the uh, on the reverse iron condor, if you if you're looking at my screen here, you know it's trading at fifteen. Let me just lock this to so fifteen thirty five. So my max risk would be fifteen thirty five, but my upside profit's only four sixty five. So what is that? 465 divided by 1535 equals, that's only 30%. So if, if I were able to get max profit to the upside, that's 30%. Well my, well, my profit target is 30% on this. So when this actually sets up and it's trading for, let's say, 12 or $13, then you, know, you, you can hit 30% and it's not anywhere near the max on that upside. So I like to, I like to, you know, I'll, I'll only get in this if it's, if it gets down to, you know, let's say, it gets down to 14, then we've got, you know, that, that's a much better ratio as far as upside max profit versus max risk. So somewhere, you know, around 14 or less is what I would want to pay for that, but it's trading in it. 15 and a half bucks. It's not a good risk reward. Now, if obviously if price goes down, you still have some significant profits, but I want I want a chance to hit my profit target to the upside or the downside. Yeah, we get. Looks like that's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Today is Thursday. Yeah, it depends. Annette, you know, sometimes like right now, you know, I just set it up based on the Delta criteria in the back test. So, you know, this one ends up being between the longs is is fifteen wide. Sometimes it'll be ten wide, and you can, you know, so it depends on that too. So it's not just under 14, but that's typically going to, for a 15 wide, that's typically going to be a, a good frame of reference. You know, if the longs were 10 wide, you know, that one's trading for 17.
But if it's 10 wide, yeah, yeah, probably, probably 14 is probably a good number for regardless. So that post uh, from Michael Todd, let's look at that. So that'd be the 55 delta and 30 delta. So that would be something like. Forty three hundred and the and thirty five, yeah. So this would be the setup for the for the Tim Weiss one, but still I don't I wouldn't trade that. Not with a thirty percent profit target. Not enough profit to the upside. No idea, Yvesti. I can't see what you're doing, buddy. Uh, I would assume Theta's being held up a little bit for Jerome, and then it'll get released after his speech. I don't. I'm not. I just. I'm not sure about the significance of it. Yeah, yeah, Yves, you're gonna have to post a screenshot or something, man. I can't. I can't. From what you posted, I have no idea. Translating and guessing is not my strong suit. S&P's getting close to unchanged. Russell is down a half percent. E-D-H-N-C. Is that Ed? Can I call you Ed? All right, cool. All right, Ed, uh, is there any content available that explains more of the why behind some of the entry criteria on the various trade plans, overnight VIX change, for example? So logically, if you think about it, the reason that we enter a RIC on it using that VIX filter is because we're buying, well, essentially we're buying premium, right? We want to We want to buy the options when they're priced lower and obviously the a big move is is kind of the main thing that benefits it but also um you know if if volatility is already contracted it may not contract more so if if you're buying premium that's kind of the more ideal situation right you want to you want to buy when it's after it's already gone down and then benefit from a big move or at least hope premiums don't decay extremely fast so so that that so the VIX filter is we want it, we want the VIX to contract at least a, a quarter of a percent overnight. So we get that contraction, then get in with the reverse iron condor because we're buying that premium. So for the other, it's it's just the opposite. What you'll notice is that the um, when we're selling premium, when we're selling an iron condor, we want we want volatility to have expanded. We want those premiums to be juiced. We want we want to be selling those options when they're priced higher and then benefiting from that contraction and the back test supports that. So that's, that's, that's kind of the logic behind the, um, those, those filters, at least the VIX filter. Does that make sense, Ed? Uh, Yves, you're just, you're, looks like you're just doing 
th there's four legs on a reverse iron condor. You're only showing two. That's the that's the issue. You're essentially buying a strangle. Yeah, a reverse iron condor is four legs. You're you're buying a strangle, but then you're also selling a selling a strangle essentially. You should be able to give us, have you, have you watched the, the reverse iron condor course kind of walks through step-by-step step all the details. Uh, Dark Avenger. I didn't, I didn't enter a Rick. It's not priced good. I'm not, I'm not trading it. You want me to paste the one I'm looking at? Or did you think I entered? Okay, cool, Ed. Uh, what is the best way to ask about some of the other entry criteria I've seen? I think it'd be, uh, I mean, this this is really the the best time. I mean, you know, especially this morning, I'm not I'm not entering anything. So, you know, we'll we'll, we'll cut this a little bit short, but yeah, when anytime we're, anytime we're on a live stream, if you've been on any, you'll notice that we get in our trades and then we just kind of chat about random stuff. So. This time is really reserved for you all to ask questions and stuff. So if there's ever any questions, those will be definitely be priority over our meaningless banter. Speaking of important things, I forgot to close out my BNB. So let me do that really quick. I'll come back to your question. Trying to get filled in my B and B at nine forty. One ended it up being a nice little winner. How about nine thirty five? No takers at nine thirty five. How about nine thirty? Build at 9.30. All right, so just closed out my one, two, posted that in the calendar channel. Yeah, Ed, you can post in the in the chat here, or we, we kind of use this channel to chat during the live streams. Uh, you could, you know, if you have some just specific zero DTE questions, I would post those in the channel right above the zero DTE channel. Or, yeah, if you want if you want answers live, um, do that during the uh, live streams here. Uh, La Souza, yeah, I trade a, I trade a three to two. Uh, Tim Weiss and some others trade four threes. So yeah, that's uh, that's what we are referring to when we say ratio. It's just more, more puts than calls, or more calls than puts. In these in these cases, it's more, more puts than calls. But you know, Tim Weiss just posted this morning a specific situation where it looks like it tests well to do more calls than puts as well. Yeah, any anytime you do more of one than the other, that's what we refer to as a ratio. Yep, there you go, Evis. 
Yevis, not to be confused with Tevis. Uh, the ratios isn't really about having a directional view, Lasoza. It's more puts trade richer than calls, right? Because of the put skew, because of the nature of how the market can move down like an elevator and up like a stair step. Puts have puts just trade richer. They're 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 more expensive, and so you get more premium uh, by by doing the ratio and. Testing has shown that they they perform better. So Yves, you pronounce your first name as Eve. So I just call you Eve. Is that correct? Oh, okay. Got it. Thanks for clarifying. All right, so let's take a quick look at some other positions. Put on a new time fly yesterday. Looks like it's up a few hundred. We've got our other time fly in the Nov 3, which we've calend put a calendar adjustment to. Looks like that one's up a few hundred. Neither of those are quite to profit target yet. We've got a duck in SPX. I haven't added another duck yet. You know, we've just been, you know, we've had a couple down days, but we're still just kind of in this consolidation zone here. So if we get another move that kind of breaks out of that, I'll uh, I'll look to scale into another duck. Got some short premium in oil. Theta's still being held up in there. Got a uh, some short premium in MES. We're not. We've done a couple adjustments to this one. We're not quite to profit target. It's trading at 58. We need to get into the 40s, low 40s, I think, is where we hit profit target. ZN, we just get under this. We've got vol got pumped into that a little bit. ZS, we're not quite to profit target on that one after adjustments. QQQ, not quite to profit target on that one after adjustments. We've got this VIX kind of hedge. It's up a few hundred. We've got a TGIF that will be taking off today. Took half off yesterday. We'll take the remaining half off today. Well, there's definitely some juice pumped into today with this expected move. Let's see, Chris, I'm sure you posted it right. Uh, 31, yeah, it's still showing 31. So, you know, I think yesterday it was 26. So they're definitely adding a little juice in there for Powell today. About 52 on the upside.
about 90 on the downside. See where my Rick would be trading now. That's still at fifteen sixty. So that it looks like that premium is being held up pretty good. So no go on any AM trades. Uh, La Souza, has your overall trading strategy evolved much over the last few years or does the core remain largely the same? Yeah, it's changed a lot in the last year. I mean, a year ago, I was I was trading very little zero DTE at all. But remember, the everyday options, um, the everyday expirations in SPX only became available in May of last year. And I I traded zero DTE some before that when there's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but I never really had a clear strategic plan until I started using option Omega and being able to back test intraday strategies because prior to that I was using e Delta Pro or CML which are all just end of day data you can't you know you can't test their DTE strategies so that's been a huge evolution in my trading. I assume that would be like a double butterfly trading naked. Yeah. Yeah. I've traded those before. Um, yeah. I mean, that's usually, I mean, I've kind of moved to the time fly adjusting with the calendar spread, but you know, if you adjust with a, a butterfly spread, you could start with a single and then turn it into something that looks like a Batman butterfly. I would only do that to the downside. So for example, and I, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't put those on just to initiate a, a, a spread, but, um, you know, let's say we have this one on here and price moves down around the downside break even, you know, you could, you could add, because at that point premium is going to be elevated because price has been moving down most likely. And so, you know, that'd be a good time just to put on a butterfly anyway. So, um, you know, you could add another one here to kind of create that, that Batman butterfly. I don't like doing it to the upside because if price is pushing higher, volatility is contracting, not really the most attractive time to put on a butterfly. So that's, that's why I've kind of gravitated to the time fly, which uses the uh, calendar adjustment. My favorite overall strategy, PT, that's like asking me which one of my children are my favorite. Depends on the day. I mean, zero DTE has certainly been the most profitable this year. Uh, I, I love calendars. Calendars, um, well, the TGIFs have not been great this year. All, a lot of the other ones have, though. Uh, which are a lot of kind of newer ones that again, since everyday options were in introduced, you know, these, these weren't available just even, you know, a little over a year ago. So, you know, these one twos and these six sevens and five sevens and three fours and all, you know, those are all, those are all new as of May of last year. And the time flies starting to, uh, yeah, I, I love the time fly too. It's just simple, quick, high winning percentage, profitable.
power hour. Yeah, Wuga, you're probably right. I mean, if I had to break it down to uh, one thing, if you put a gun to my head and said, this is the only thing you can ever trade again, part of that is just being able to hang out with you guys, right? Yeah, it's fun. It's consistent. So yeah, if I had to pick a kid, I'd I'd kill the others and I'd pick power hour. <laughs> Eve, what do you mean? You're what do you you're reserved about the validity of the back test? What do you mean by that? I mean it's it's an easy thing to verify yourself. Just look look at the trade logs the next day. They're they're right on. Look at 355 message. Not sure what you mean. You know, one thing that I've done a lot of and a lot of other people do is, is you know, what we call forward testing where you have a back test. You're trading it exactly like the back test. And then the next day you're comparing your fills and your, your trade to the back test. And it kind of helps you understand what's going on now it doesn't mean you're always going to get the exact same fill right i mean it fills at you know that exact time sometimes it's kind of in between strikes when you're trading in real life you got to pick pick the strikes that um you know that, that are the closest and sometimes that can change at the last second you know there's little things like that but overall it's it's right on Oh, your post above. I was testing this morning with Option Omega. I had RSI criteria to filter out setups. However, I noticed that trades were filtered out even though the one minute 14 period RSI did not qualify. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't use indicators like RSI. So that would be something to ask uh, Option Omega about. Yeah, they've got a uh, help and um, feature request and stuff in their Discord, so that's the that's the best place to to ask a question like that. But yeah, I don't I don't use that stuff, so I would not be the guy to ask. Is Dick K on here? No, it doesn't look like it. I, I'll save this story for Power Hour, but I had a dream last night about I was hanging out with Tim Weiss and Dick K. That that tells you I'm, I'm hanging out with you guys way too much. I'm dreaming about you guys. <laughs> I woke up and I was like, "What the? What is going on in my head?" Did not involve a private jet, but it did involve a yacht. <laughs> it's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not a great story. Not a great dream by any means. It's, not, it's very short, and but uh, I'll I'll save it for Power Hour. Dick K's on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I had for dinner, but. Uh, yeah, Eve, that's, that's correct. Volatility and price movement really is what it comes down to.
All right, my friends, I'm going to jump off here. Um, I do have a DKS that would qualify. So I'll do that here in about 25 minutes or so. But uh, anyway, we'll be back. By the way, if, if you... Um, if you click on the DKS in my uh, trade plan, I did tweak that a little bit. I posted the other day, but just FYI, I kind of tweaked the management of it a little bit. Improved it a bit. All right. Uh, catch you all in power hour. Have a good rest of your day. Take care.